Hello, I'm Bradley, and welcome to my channel. Okay, so today this is me sort of talking out loud a little bit, uh, so I'm not feeling so great today. You know those days where you just find that everything gets on top of you a bit much? Um, so I've got an operation coming up. Um, this will be my fourth operation to put something right. Um, if you'd like to know more about that, it's my Hanya Hell uh, Nightmare Journey, uh, which is on my channel, and all sorts of problems associated to that. Um, and, and that's really getting on top of me uh, lately, and um, I'm just not really feeling as though I... Everything's probably not so together. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes I can sit here on my channel and I can and I can be absolutely so positive and I can and I can look to the future and I can be really, really real optimistic and I and I can I can really handle everything. Um sometimes I can't. Sometimes I can't. And you know what one of the most amazing things in the world, what I am still so privileged to be able to do, what gets me back feeling right, or helping me on my way to feeling back right, is a visit to my nan. Now my nan, bless her heart, is so, so precious to me. She is such a special lady. Now, growing up, right from ever since I can remember, my nan has always been in my life. She is my mum's mum, and my mum I'm absolutely been blessed with in this life. I have had a fantastic, fantastic, amazing mum. Such an amazing bond with her. We're like best friends. In fact, we are. And my mum, my mum is with hers, and my nan. Um, my nan, um, unfortunately, she has Alzheimer's now, so she is in a different stage of her life. She is a different lady, but of course, she's still my precious, lovely nan. And um, and I feel privileged in this life to be able to say that I almost have like two mums because growing up, um, my nan was always there. Every significant moment of my life, my nan's been there. My first operation, um, all throughout schooling, I used to stay with my nan at the weekends. Um, I remember telling my nan uh, the girl I was taking to the prom. I remember, because I love to sing, I remember the first time my nan heard me sing. All sorts of things. I remember telling my nan what career I wanted to do. Um, so many amazing, special things. Um, and I've had many, many wonderful memories with my nan. But of course she has Alzheimer's now. And I'm 27. Do you know what I mean? I'm not a young boy anymore. But do you know what? It's strange, isn't it, with grandparents. My nan, every time I visit my nan, I almost feel as I'm about five years old again. <laughs> no, all the time, of course. And of course I am an adult. But my nan, there's something really quite magical when I visit my nan that it just makes all the worries and the stresses just go away. I look at my nan and I smile, and yes, she has Alzheimer's now, but I see her as much as I can all the time. And even throughout this pandemic, when I've been able to see my nan, and uh, my nan, my nan is in a lovely place. Uh, she's in a care home, but it's um, it's my nan has like an apartment room. She it's a beautiful place where she is, um, and it's for people with my nan's illness, Alzheimer's. And I have such a, a good relationship with the people that look after my nan and, and the management team. It's lovely. So as a family, we feel very very privileged. Um, it still doesn't it still doesn't get away from the fact that we can't be there as much as what we would like, and that really and I and I really feel that sometimes I feel very very guilty uh, that I can. I can go on with my life, but yet my nan can't. Um, and that's something which I've struggled with for a very long time. Not all the time. Sometimes I'm more together with it than others, um, but sometimes I'm not. But this is a positive uh, clip. I'm going to try and keep this positive because you may tell I'm not feeling great. Not unwell, but just feeling as though everything's got a bit much in life at the moment. A little bit sort of um, lots to think about. Perhaps lost my way with everything going on my mind a little bit much. Stresses, worries. Of course, with the upcoming operation, which is an extensive operation. Um, so there's lots of things and appointments uh, to get ready for that. Um, I also am having a whole host of problems with my leg and my groin, which is part of the surgery which I'm having done. Um, I have overactive bladder syndrome, horrifically, which is really getting on top of me at the moment as well. All apart from having a failed hernia surgery, which is what's going to hopefully put me right with this next operation. 
If I sound a bit different, I've also got a polyp up my nose, which is getting bigger and it's very, very uncomfortable. So that's getting on top of me at the moment. And I feel very stressed, very sort of almost lost a little bit. So I get to see my nan very often. Um, I've never not been to see my nan when the opportunity has not been there. And this is the only time this year, this past 18 months, with the COVID-19 pandemic, this has only been the only ever time in my life where there has been time periods where I haven't been able to see my nan. But what I'm doing is I'm calling all the time. I'm calling the care home where my nan is all the time. I don't call it that. It's almost like a retirement home for people with Alzheimer's. So um, my, my nan has a very lovely team looking after her and I am so thankful that they do such an amazing job. But whenever I see my nan, I always, I always look at my nan and it's sort of just even even when I as soon as I see my nan it sort of takes me right back to when I was a young child um my nan is such a strong strong well-powered incredible lady just like my mum my mum is just like her <laughs> rather um and just so privileged I mean I've seen her today with my brother and it literally just puts everything into perspective for me. It almost kind of grounds me. It helps me deal with the stresses and worries. I talk to my nan about everything, even though she has Alzheimer's now. And she answers me. Not not in a way that she would if she was perfectly healthy, sort of mentally with her mind, but she does answer me. And I know she's there. And just sometimes even her look is that it's all going to be all right. And that it's going to be all right, my love. That's what my nan would say. And... Um, and it's strange because when I was when I was younger, my nan always said to me, I'll never ever see you grow up, my love, but I'll always be with you and I'll always be looking down on you. And you know what? I don't think she ever thought that she would see me to my age. She seemed to be 95 and I'm 27. Um, but we still have an incredible bond. We still do. And it just makes me feel so much better when I see my nan. Um, I wish things were different. I wish, it, obviously, of course, she didn't have this illness. Absolutely. Um, I feel very guilty that she has to go through this. Uh, I feel awful coming away. I always do. Awful coming away because she has to stay in that situation. Um, but when I'm stressed or when I'm worried, like I'm really worried about the future and things at the moment. I'm worried about the outcome of the operation. I'm worried about my job at the moment. I'm worried about career-wise and I'm worried about it all coming together. And I'm just full of everything at the moment, full of worry. And uh, I probably think I've got myself into a bit of a situation with it all. And like probably a lot of us have throughout this COVID pandemic, where we've had a lot of a lot of uh, freedom, of course, stripped from us for our safety, of course, to stay fit and well throughout this pandemic. It's, it's certainly taking a toll on me. I work from home, so I don't have that sort of that separate sort of cut off from work and home either. So that's really difficult as well. But you know, when I when I talk about all this and I just breathe and I take a moment and I look with my nan, and I done this with my nan today, and I talk for about all sorts of things. And every now and again, my nan, my nan will ask me back, but I know she's listening. I know she's there, and she will smile and just looking at my nan and seeing her all done up to the nines and and seeing her incredibly well, um, it helps. So there's really nothing like a visit to my nan for me. Um, my mum is the most amazing person in the world and she is a huge inspiration to me and she's that sort of that nudge in life when things get difficult things get difficult that I know I'm always going to be okay because I've got my mum there and my, my dad's amazing absolutely and it's it's always nice to know that I've got them there if I should if I should fall I suppose um <sighs> my nan is just sort of like she always just kind of got me. If there was a worry, she would know, like my mum does. But we have a very busy family, so my mum doesn't always necessarily have the time. But whereas with my nan, where I used to spend weekends and things with my nan all the time, <laughs> she would just know. So sometimes I wish I could talk to my nan a little bit more often, I really do. Um, I very often feel that she would have the answer to a lot of my problems a lot of worries and strains and things, because very often I don't like to burden people around me with it. Um, I know I can go to my mum with absolutely everything, and she's there and she's so incredible, she really is, but I always feel that because there's so much what she's dealing with and what's going on, I would just be adding to it. So 
Here, yeah, there is truly nothing like a visit. Manan. I don't want to end this on a negative, but it's just me talking, me being open, me being sort of honest. But I watched something some weeks ago about um, men and young men uh, struggling with their sort of the thoughts, their feelings, stresses, sort of and depression and things. I don't think mine's depression. I always just say I think that I thought a bit too much and I've kind of lost my way. And I really do feel that the last couple of days. Um, there's nothing like a grandparent, is there? My nan, honestly, I can't get across how special she is to me. And um, I cannot put myself in a situation to think, what will I do when she's not here anymore? Not at all. Not yet, anyway. Um, I don't want to. Um, having said that, I know if I've always got my mum now, I will be fine. That's what my mum says to me. <laughs> You'll always be okay, love. Because I'm there. You have me there. So my nan, my nan does worry me. I suppose it's the age of my nan as well, coming up to her sort of age. Um, people don't live forever, sadly, do they? Uh, you can tell, can't you? Probably I'm feeling quite down. Um, I am. I don't kind of know how to get out of it really either. But I come to my channel for a way of breathing and getting all this off my chest. So please don't sit there and think, well, what's wrong? Or ask a question and feel down, because that's not what I'm trying to do. This is just my way of getting things off my chest, talking and getting it out there, because of course that helps you deal with things. So the key to this clip is there's nothing like visiting your nan or your grandparent. It could be anyone. But for me, what got me through today is a visit to my nan. But keep talking. That's the main thing. Keep talking. OK, thanks very much for sharing this with me. It has helped. It has made me feel a lot better. Um, and so did seeing my nan today. <laughs> so there's nothing quite like seeing your nan. Just remember that. And I'm 27. <laughs> okay, thanks very much. Until next time we see them. Bye-bye now.